Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. We are now up to lesson three in our series on trigonometric graphs. And in front of me, you can see a sine wave, a sine curve. So the equation of this line is y equals sine theta. And horizontally, we have theta. Uh, vertically, we have y. And uh, you can see here that the angle is measured in radians. <clears throat> so if you're not used to that, I can change them to degrees for you right now. So here, pi radians is 180 degrees, and 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. And uh, obviously here I have 90 degrees, or pi over 2. And here we have uh, 1.5 pi. Uh, or um, 270 degrees. Okay, so the first concept I want to talk about is amplitude. Okay, so how do you get the amplitude? Well, if you're looking at this graph vertically, you can see here that the range of this graph, in other words, the boundary of the uh, vertical axis for this graph, is from negative 1 to 1. Okay, it's from negative 1 to 1. So the graph doesn't go beyond this boundary vertically. Okay, so if you're looking at the distance from the maximum point, the vertical distance between the maximum point and the, minim and the minimum point, and you divide this distance by 2, Okay, so whatever this distance is, we divide it by 2. Okay, we divide it by 2, cut it in half. Then each half, okay, each half, this distance here is what we call the amplitude. Okay, so basically, if you get the maximum vertical point, maximum vertical point, and the minimum vertical point, you get the distance between those two uh, points, and you divide it by two, then you get the amplitude. So therefore, you can say the amplitude is uh, half the distance half the vertical distance between the maximum and the minimum. Okay, so how do you figure this out um, using a formula? Well, we know that the maximum point, let's call the maximum y value. Okay, uh, y2. And let's call the minimum y value y1. So maximum y value let's call that y2 and y1 is the minimum y value then you can say the amplitude is y2 minus y1 which will give us the vertical distance divided by 2 okay so if we substitute in the numbers from the graph the maximum y value is 1 the minimum y value is negative 1. Minimum y value is negative 1. So then the amplitude of sine theta, y equals sine theta, is equal to, uh, sorry, so y2 is 1 y1 is negative 1, so y2 is 1, y1 is negative 1, so it's 1 minus negative 1 divided by 2, so that's 1 plus 1 divided by 2, so that's 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Now you might think, oh, what's all this working out? You can tell straight away that the amplitude 
the length of the amplitude is 1 just from the graph, right? Because this number is 1 here, this number is 0 here. The distance will just be 1 straight away. You don't need to do all this. Well, later on, when you get a curve that is not a sine curve, you might need to do this. Okay, so that's the amplitude. Now, the next question is, can I control the amplitude? So, right now we're working with the default graph of y equals sine theta. Now, what if I put a number, okay, a constant, and I multiply it at the front of the equation? So what that means is, if I put a number, for example, called, uh, let's put 3 in front, y equals 3 sine theta. In other words, 3 times sine theta. Right, what do you think will happen to the graph? So let's have a look. So originally we had theta. When theta was 0, sine theta was uh, 0. Theta is 90 sine theta was 1 theta was 180 degrees theta, uh, sine theta is back to 0 and 270 degrees to negative 1 360 degrees back to uh, 0 okay so uh, if I modify the equation and put three times at the front okay what happens to our table of values what happens to our table of value is every number that I've put down for sine theta I now need to multiply it by three so zero times three is zero one times three is three zero times three is zero negative one times three is negative three zero okay so if I draw this graph together with sine theta it'll look like this okay so the two equations will look like this where the red line okay the red line is y equals uh, sine theta all right where the maximum point is one and the minimum point is negative one and the blue line okay is um, y equals 3 sine theta where the maximum is 3 and the minimum is negative 3 okay so we have what we call a vertical dilation we've stretched the graph vertically. So uh, the number at the front of the equation, the number 3, so if I have the equation y equals a sine theta where a is a constant, right, a is a, a real number so a can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 2.3 whatever you want a is a constant there are two things that a does number one a is the amplitude right because if you have a look at our two graphs the red one has an amplitude of one and the blue one has an amplitude of 3 right so the number in front is the amplitude and obviously here without a number there it just means 1 1 times sine theta so this is the amplitude and same thing here this is the amplitude the number in front is the amplitude 
Secondly, it is also the dilation factor, a vertical dilation factor. So let me write that vertical dilation factor. Because uh, if you change this number to three, what that means is it is stretched vertically by a factor of three. Right? How much it has stretched uh, is uh, three times of the original amount. Okay, so that's why it is also the vertical dilation factor. So uh, without drawing the graph, you can probably imagine y equals 5 sine theta, what it's going to look like. Basically, the graph is going to be even higher and even lower, like that. And then if we have, for example, y equals 0 0.5 sine theta, Okay, then what we have done is we have vertically compressed it. So instead of stretching it, we compressed it so it'll look something like this. Right? And I know that looks messy, so I'm going to draw a better version for you in Desmos. So I'm just going to show you how you draw it. So in Desmos, I'm going to type in y equals 5 sine theta. Right? So that's the green one, and y equals 0 0.5 sine x, and that's the purple one. Okay, thanks for watching the tutorial, guys. See you next time.